This is Hot Mike. Hot Mike. On the networks of WDAY. WDAY. Here's Don Izzo. Welcome back, everybody. Hour two on this Tuesday morning. <laughs> just look at it. I'll get to it in a bit here. My favorite football team just can't seem to get out of its own way. It's been the case for 50 years, and there's some more drama today. We'll do that uh, coming up in just a little bit. I don't want to keep our next guest waiting uh, any longer. Just name Miss Golf in the state of North Dakota for 2024. Officially now the uh, high school career is done. It's on to bigger and brighter things at North Dakota State. We've uh, had her on forever. Now I can actually call her now a collegiate golfer. So we welcome on uh, Kindred's Avery Bartels to the show uh, this morning. I was joking with you off air. This is uh, we have you not on the golf course for a rare like, but you're what's your tea time like? Ten thirty? When, when are you heading out to the golf course? I'm gonna practice before, but I'll like tee <laughs> off around like three thirty ish. Well, congratulations on the award. Tell me the emotions when you found out you had won that. Uh, thank you. It was really amazing to get it, just because like the finalists were all amazing golfers. Like I had known them for years. And, of course, Anna Huddle is going to be my future teammate. So, like, getting that award was just, like, kind of, like, solidifying that, like, I did what I could in my high school career. And now it's, like, kind of move on and focus on college. You do what you could. You did – I mean, you you won everything. I mean, if we talked to you right after it was over. You've had a few months now since to reflect on it. And I don't even know if it's sunk in. So, I'll ask you now. Has it sunk in yet? Or is that something you think years down the line? Like, holy cow, I did that. I think it kind of has sunk in like funny story for like English. We had to write a personal essay and I wrote mine on like my final three holes of high school and like ending my high school college career. And I submitted to the Scholastic Ryan Awards and I got an award for it. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Yeah. But um, I think like that kind of like writing that essay, like made me reflect on everything I've done and like all the people I've met, the accomplishments I've received. So like that kind of helped me, but it still kind of hasn't like really truly sunk in. To have the success you've had it, it's especially in golf it's so it's fleeting it, one hole you could be great and the next hole it could be a, a mindset men, mentality is the thing i'm getting at avery how did you build that to not let a bad hole or stretch of holes affect you when you're out there playing yeah i think patience is a huge part of golf like i've had to learn that over the years i remember like in seventh grade I just didn't have that. I would start crying the second things went bad, but I think that's just a thing in girls golf. They got learned. And um, it's like kind of, I've gone a stronger, a stronger mental game over the years, obviously to like reach the success I've had. And I was talking, I'm like best friends with like Carson Haniston and Aiden Hall who have both won state. Yeah. And Carson texted us and was like, how do I sit on a five shot lead? And <laughs> so we had to give him some advice and we we're like, you play that as match play. It's like when you're in the lead by that far state tournament you played as match play because there's really no other way to play and keep your head in it because I remember my freshman year I played that entire final 18 holes like I was one down mm. like I had to get back like I had to get shots back so I think it like almost like that kind of switched my brain to thinking differently on the golf course that's it you're one of the few people that can actually answer that question that he asked you about playing with a five shot lead <laughs> Yeah, but when you're, you're put in that situation, it's it's uh, it's interesting you said that about feeling like you're down. But that if that's something you had to remind yourself, like on every shot, every hole, like oh, I, I can't, I just got to block out where the leaderboard is right now. Yeah, because going into the day, I had a one shot lead, and I was like, I'm not letting her get close. Like she's very amazing golfer. Obviously, she had won three state titles or four state titles before. So I was like, I cannot let her even get like a hint of like knowing that she got me. So I kept playing like I was one down the entire time. And I think that really let me like focus and dial in. Like every shot really mattered until like I had like a 13 shot lead, I think. And I kind of, I started three pine every hole, but it was fine. <laughs> we'll just ignore that part. Uh, tell me about this past weekend of playing at Fargo country club, what that experience was like with the, uh, the Russ Newman invitational. I really like the Russ Newman. I just seem to never play well on it, but it's also my first term of the year usually. But I really like FCC. I love playing it. It just happens to never be my week <laughs> during the Russ Newman. About that, you mentioned that so you're used to playing, obviously, when your schedule's in, in the fall. Now it's going to be you're playing both seasons. You're playing the fall and the spring. Tell me about adjusting for that and getting ready for collegiate golf now. Yeah, I think it's going to be uh, not, like, too difficult, but, like, it's going to be different, obviously, playing in both fall and spring like highly competitively and only having like two months out of the year because I'm used to having a basketball season in between my golf yeah. seasons. So I think that adjustment will kind of be big for me, but I think I'll be fine with it. 
what do you think the the biggest challenge will be about the spring, especially because that's typically a time you haven't played about getting your game ready to go when it's February and March. Yeah, I think it'll be like our coach is obviously really good about getting us with swings in because we don't have a course open like some of the other colleges do. We have to travel down south during the spring. So I'm really just getting like trust in his process and preparing me and also working extra hard to prepare myself as well. When you have seen, have you had a chance to look at the the schedule yet? Have you seen the courses that you're going to be playing at and anything jump off the page to you? Uh, I don't know if I can say. Or... <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I won't get you in trouble here. But yeah, just, the, I guess, let me rephrase. The courses that, what do you think the challenge will be of adjusting going from playing around here to now playing Division One golf courses in your mind? I think, obviously, distance is going to be a big factor. Like, I'm going, like, high school is 5,100 yards, and college is going to be around 6,000 yards, oh. and I play, like, 58 for um, uh, our summer tournaments already. So distance will always be a big factor, and instead of, like, hitting wedges into greens, oh, instead of hitting, like, wedges into greens, I'll be hitting, like, uh, eight and seven iron so just like that and like ball striking will be a big factor these courses are going to be way tighter i'm assuming and the greens are going to be a lot different so i gotta get used to short game and playing and all that we were talking off air you had your college orientation yesterday um what has been orientation like to meet your future teammates i know you know some of them what are you excited about in the in the the challenge of playing team golf what do you what are you really excited about about that I'm really excited about like the challenge part, obviously, because in high school you only you bring six to travel with you, but college is only five, right. so that's one less person you get to bring. And we already have a small roster, so it's really competitive. So I'm really excited for that challenge, and I really love all my teammates. Like they're great. I played with them before I even committed to NDSU, and it was just like amazing. Like on my official visit, we're all like sitting on the sophomores' couch in their apartment. I'm like, wow, like I could do this for the next four <laughs> years. Like this is great. You mentioned Anna. We had her on when we saw her playing last year at the River Ram, which I want to ask in a second. And I think we talked to you about this. I know I asked her about having the Class A and the Class B champs both going into the issue. How big a deal is that for you? I think it's huge because it's showing the talent that NDSU or the state of North Dakota is creating. Because I remember our coach was like, we haven't had North Dakota recruits able to play at NDSU for years now. So I think it kind of shows out to the hard work that the girls in North Dakota are giving, like me and Anna especially, like winning state. She won once, I won four times, obviously, and we both dominated respectively in those state championships. So I think that's just really showing, like, the hard work that all these girls in North Dakota are playing in. What's your favorite club in the bag right now? What's what's your number one you love right now? I honestly don't know because my normal favorite club wasn't treating me so well at the rest of Newman. <laughs> So you're so not, I'm not sure. you're not speaking to it right now. You're not on speaking terms. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? We're not connecting right now. <laughs> uh, tell us about your your summer here. This is not a slow time. Coaches want you out playing, and you, obviously you're going to be doing that. Yeah. So I obviously have the Red River Ram coming up, which is a big local favorite, and then I have the Minnesota Junior Girls in DL also coming up, and then I have um, my team Minnesota Wisconsin matches through my Minnesota Junior PGA Tour, which is super fun. I absolutely loved that tournament last year. Now we get to go to Wisconsin to play in it, so I'll be super fun. And then I get to end my summer with the Pine Palm. Have you done that one before? No, I couldn't. I could. You can start like when you're 16, but because of high school, yeah. I couldn't do it. So, What are you most excited about that? I mean, there, there's obviously been some tremendous women's players that have played out there. Uh, what are you most excited about playing at Detroit Country Club? I think just like playing against dudes, like honestly, like I think that'll just be super fun and like playing against people I know because there's no women's division. Right. So just playing from like these back tees and like challenging myself right before college because I'm ending my year off on that. I think it'll be super fun. That is a tight golf course. I mean, that is one that you gotta you gotta be accurate. What do you think when I say that? Is that getting excited or like okay, that's a little nerve wracking? Or both. Yeah, no, I think it'll be good for me because, like, out of Oxbow, I can kind of skew my driver wherever because there's no trees. So I think that will be a great challenge for me going into college because I really need to figure that part of my game out. Is there a part of this about college golf that you you don't know about? Like, I'm excited about because it's the unknown. What what comes to mind when I ask you that? I think just like not knowing if I'm going to be playing or not. Oh. Obviously, like traveling because it's just like so competitive with our team. I don't know. I think it'll be very interesting to see how it all uh, works out this year, but I don't know. I've, I'm feeling pretty good. The the adjustment thing, you make a good point on that because you're, you're used to being the best and now you're going to be playing with other players that are obviously really, really good. That's got a, that's a mental adjustment as well. 
Yeah, I think me and Anna were even talking about this when we were playing together at the Rust Human about like having that community around us because we both practice by ourselves all the time because yeah. there's not many junior golfers out where we are. And being around people that are better than us, that are really competitive with us, lifting with them, spending all of our time with them, we're going to learn so much and we're going to be challenged a lot. So I'm really excited. Is there, I think I may have asked you this before, so I'll make it more localized. Is there a course around, you know, tri state area, a couple states around here you haven't played yet, you really would like to? Like I Minnes- think I really want to play like either like Hazeltine or Winsong okay. in Minnesota. Like obviously like the iconic courses out there. So I think the, those would be really fun. Those are really, really hard. Is you is those <laughs> ones like you is is that a challenge for you? You like those kind of courses or ones that you know what, I know I can make birdie on most of these holes. Which ones do you appeal more to you in your game? I really liked like the challenging ones. Like we played the Royal Golf Club. Like I played it for my tournament champions a year prior, and then I played it for um, the Minnesota Wisconsin Cup last year. And that course is so slopey. The greens are so I'd never played greens that hard in my life. And like the way they have to like play yourself around that golf course, it was so challenging, but it's so fun. It's like my favorite golf course in Minnesota, so I really liked it. Uh, there was a photo posted on Twitter. I got to ask about about with you and Riley Sunram named the Kindred Athletes of oh, the Year. Yes. Um, tell me about that and what that honor meant to you uh, being named that this year. Yeah. So that was at our, uh, class senior banquet where like we give out, um, like our honors cords, our honors trophies, like our other scholarship awards. And so our AD, uh, Brad Ambrosius like was announcing it. And I think just like, we all knew Riley was going to get it for the dude <laughs> side, obviously, but I was kind of iffy on my side. I just didn't really know. Cause Payne Getty was like my other, like, I was like, Oh, she's in four sports. One state cross country, amazing at track, amazing at basketball. She's playing collegiate basketball now. Like, I was like, I don't know. And, like, when he said my name, I was like, oh, like, that feels amazing. Like, being recognized for, like, my success by my school, it just felt really good. Riley's a large human, right? And he just dwarfs out the sun, right? Yes, and I'm, like, standing next to him, and, like, my shoulder's right here, and his armpit is, like, way up here. I'm like, this is crazy. Uh, I've, I've had him on funny times as well. Uh, how big a deal is he around school? Can you give us a little intel on that? I always think it's funny because it seemed like once he committed to Minnesota, he wore Minnesota stuff nonstop. <laughs> like it seemed like every week he had something new Minnesota on, unless it was like a football or a basketball game or a track meet, he was wearing kindred stuff. But it seemed like any other time he's wearing Minnesota. <sighs> it's pretty funny. To give me before I let you go, and I really appreciate the time. The what impact did Kindred have? Like being raised in that community, growing up there, what did that, how did that help for your success to get you ready for where you're at right now? Obviously, there's like, there's a culture around Kindred. Like I was talking when I was on Jeff Kolpak's, like the golf show, we yeah. talked about this. There is a huge culture around Kindred with just success and not only athletics, but academics. Like speaking around the center, we would compete for the best calculus test score back in class last year. <laughs> it's just like, it's something that, in the water, honestly, like everyone's so competitive about everything. And I think that just creates like the athletic success that we've had these past few years, which is crazy. All right. We got to know then who won, who got the higher calculus score. Okay. He got a higher most of the time him, but sometimes me. <laughs> most of the time him though. Uh, cal- I'm shaking my head at calculus. I can't even wrap my brain around that. Uh, do you know what you're majoring in yet? Yeah, I'm doing business administration, okay. but I'll probably end up switching to finance because I like more of the numbers type thing. Number, all right, you're in numbers. Well, in golf, it makes sense that you like numbers. That's uh, that's perfect. Yeah. I really appreciate the time. Congratulations on the award. Uh, I look forward to seeing you next week and more at Country Club, and uh, we'll talk soon, okay? Thank you so much, Dom. Good to see you. There she goes, Avery Bartels, kindred standout, state champion four times over, Miss Golf in North Dakota for 2024. She will be one of the many golfers that we'll be highlighting Next week, when we bring you uh, the Red River Amateur from Moray Country Club, we'll be live for three days out there, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. That's next week, uh, the 21st through the 23rd out at MCC. And uh, we've had the pleasure of getting to know uh, Avery over the last, uh, heck, three years when she started uh, running off state championships and uh, fun to catch up there before uh, collegiate golf begins in the not-too-distant future. We'll take a break. We had a bunch of emails on our earlier topic on our poll question. And... The Jets are making drama again. Their quarterback. Eric warned me. And uh, here we go again. We'll do it when we come back. Hot mic back after this.